government should not require any Texan to show proof of vaccination and reveal private health information just to go about their daily lives. Bottom line is we're going to continue to implement the law, which uh, the President of the United States has the ability, the authority, the legal authority to do. Texas Governor Greg Abbott and White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki sparring over the legality of the Biden administration's vaccine mandates as the fight between the White House and Republican governors heats up. Joining us now for reaction is urban reform president and member of the Texas Advisory Committee of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, Charles Blaine. Charles, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for, for having me, Jackie. So uh, walk us through, Charles. What's, what's your take on where things stand right now? Well, listen, I, I applaud the governor for doing what he did. I think one of the big things that has been a part of the conversation about vaccine and vaccine manda mandates is that one of the big groups that have been reluctant to get them, they look like me. So we're talking about black and Hispanic folks, largely folks who are wage workers who are working public facing jobs. So they're going to really feel the crunch of a vaccine mandate. And so with the governor stepping in, it's ensuring that they don't have to make the decision of their livelihood and continuing to put food on the table. Um, versus what they feel is right for their personal health. So I, I applaud the decision, and I think he needs to hold steady on it. In your view, what would be the better role of the government then to try to encourage uh, vaccine-hesitant populations to get vaccinated? Well, I think, you know, locally here in Harris County and Houston, we've seen our local officials getting out there and going to community events, holding vaccination events, really showing that they are getting it themselves and that it's a safe and effective way of combating this virus. But the mandate doesn't seem to be the answer. People, especially the people that we mentioned, black and Hispanic folks, are already hesitant of government and they have a deep mistrust of government. So mandating something from government is not going to going to fly with them. And so I really think that just getting out there and communicating continuing to communicate the message of the need for vaccines and the need to um, ensure that the population is safe is going to be what the answer is. I don't think mandates are it. So in your view, then, the mandate does the opposite. It, it makes them more hesitant. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it makes them more hesitant, and I think it makes them um, question the motives of government simply because what now you're saying is that they have to make that decision between their livelihood and what they choose for their personal health. So I definitely think it does the complete opposite. And, I, and there was there was conversation shortly after he announced his mandate that uh, the black voters who supported him previously were a little more um, questioning what he was doing, and they were a little more reluctant to support him going forward. And I think that's going to be a longstanding thing if he continues to kind of shove this down a population's throat that has a deep mistrust of government. Well, the Biden administration, though, also has been careful to try to find ways where they do have legal ground to do that in terms of, uh, you know, encouraging businesses to make these mandates uh, where they cannot reach over in their federal capacity. Uh, do you think that that makes a difference if it's coming from, you know, your employer at the urging of the government versus, uh, you know, some sort of a, a mandate that's enacted by the Department of Labor, for instance, for certain employers with uh, more than 100 workers? Do you think that that makes a difference if it's coming from the White House versus the person you work for? I don't think it makes a difference for the average person because at the end of the day, they then still have to make that decision between what they're choosing for their personal health care and whether or not they're going to continue to put food on the table and bring a paycheck home every two weeks or every end of the month. So I don't really think it makes much of a difference. And I think people recognize that the, the force of this is still coming from government, that whether or not their employers choose to adhere to a mandate or violate it themselves and put themselves at risk, that force, that, that strong arm of the federal government is still coming down. And so, you know, that's why, again, I applaud Governor Abbott for what he did, and I'm applauding our, our Texas legislature for considering legislation to codify what his executive order says. All right, Charles Blaine, thank you so much. Uh, enjoyed the conversation. Hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thanks.